to discuss and debate MasterChef with the reality, we have today a distinguished panel of culinary pr practitioners who will present their case for and against the concept of MasterChef, the impact that it's had on the culinary profession and the hospitality industry in general. For the affirmative today, we have Chef Dario Diagostino and Lisa Haddon. And for the negative, we have Chef George Hill and budding chef Pauline Margetts. Today, we have George Hill, who will talk about the negative impacts that um, MasterChef has had on the culinary profession. So, George. Thank you. Hello there, folks. With that introduction, I wonder whether we've got time to go through all the 120 points that we've got. <laughs> How many of you want to become cooks or chefs? Anybody? Good. Fantastic. Fantastic. That's great. Um, first of all, I want you to open your mind. Don't believe in the propaganda that you are indoctrinated with by looking at a TV show, which it says is reality and is about as far from reality uh, as you can get. In actual fact, I and many of my colleagues believe MasterChef to be almost a Gilligan's Island of food preparation. Um, the publicity that MasterChef brings to the table is just a myth, actually is incredibly detrimental. Just look at Google, don't believe me, look at Google and you'll see hundreds of comments of reality shows and how they fool people. They fool the gullible people into believing that they are watching something real. The show is a myth because the, the gullible people become to believe it's commercial cookery. We do not deny it is a show that is, quite honestly and quite effectively, a, a good show that advertises um, to the general public about food preparation in the home. But it is so unrealistic compared to what a real kitchen's about, it's actually quite laughable. I have many friends who are in actual fact offended by the term MasterChef, which my colleague will outline later on what MasterChef really means. Anybody can cook a domestic meal using recipes from Google. Probably a lot of you do every night. It doesn't make you extraordinary cooks, nor are the cooks on MasterChef extraordinary cooks. They are just people who are singled out, uh, maybe uh, mentored a little bit as to how to present themselves. They take eight hours to, pre to uh, prepare a show, which takes you half an hour to believe is real. Um, the preparation of food, quite frankly, is quite simple for four portions. Try doing it for a hundred, where you're planning menus, where you are doing um, uh, your people managing, you're working within budget constraints, and all that sort of stuff. Master Chef doesn't explain that a chef also manages budgets, costumes, is a people manager, and is not a real chef. What we worry about Master Chef is that it gives the wrong impression and attracts the wrong people. People only have to believe they dress like someone on Master Chef, and that makes them a chef. But I've never seen yet, uh, excepting a couple of guest chefs, I've never seen any contestant dressed properly. And it is a vital aspect of this industry that a chef brands themselves. Uh, this is a unique industry that needs branding. A person puts on a hat when they earned it. Do you see chefs on Master Chef licking their fingers, wearing short sleeves, uh, wearing t-shirts? Yes, you do. If you went to a professional competition, you went to a professional school, you will not see chefs without hats on or chefs in short sleeves or t-shirts or tongs and that sort of thing. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chef. Hopefully we can be friends after this. Um, basically, Master Chef is actually a good thing. Now, forget about the, just the, the myth or the propaganda. Let's not be politi politicians here because I still cook in the kitchen and I do understand how hard it is. However, what is important for me to run a business is to have bumps on set, is to have people in, but also is to retain my staff. And uh, in the old days, if you talk to anybody, everybody will say, oh, I've got a problem, I can't find staff. It's not true. You can find staff if you look after them. What Master Chef does actually entice them to be in the industry because they like to be innovative. 
they like to be creative. I use MasterChef in my events because obviously being an operator is very important for me to have good customers but also good staff because we've got to provide good food. And I have to embrace the trends. There are trends. We are in 2016. We have to be uh, able to work with the trends. I'll give you a classic example of the chef uniform. Uh, having a t-shirt or having a chef jacket, uh, really, what is the difference? I'm sure not many chefs can answer that question. Uh, it does look great, a white, nice jacket, fantastic, but a black t-shirt, there's nothing wrong with that, it's still clean. However, what it does, we have open kitchen, and the reason why we have open kitchen, open kitchen is because we want customers to see what we do. Therefore, if you have a black t-shirt, sometimes you fit in with the infrastructure, you fit in with the layout of the restaurant. These days, how many people eat with their own eyes? How many people have Instagram here? Hands up, how many people have Instagram? I'm sure a few of you have Instagram, and I'm sure a few of you follow uh, George Columbaris. I'm sure a few of you get uh, um, some sort of inspiration from the photo. I'm sure a few of you look at the tattoos a lot of chefs have. Is that right? Am I right? That's what Master Chef does. We are in 2016. We got young guys here sitting on the chair over there. One day they want to become chef. And what are they going to do? They're going to follow Master Chef. They're going to get the passion and possibly the love. They're going to come on board. They're going to come in my kitchen. They're going to work with me. And as long as they clean, as long as they got clean hands, if they got good tattoo, I'm going to use that as a marketing for my business. Thank you. We agree that some gullible people believe that MasterChef is about chefs and foolishly may even attract them to um, the cookery as a career. The real question must also be, does the show attract the right kind of people to become cooks? The program is not about commercial cookery and it has links with no real chefs and no real commercial kitchen. Further, the show is actually detrimental to the cookery industry. Where I've done placement, um, they actually said MasterChef has really hurt them because they have a lot more people do complaining um, because they think that on the TV it should be the same sort of thing. Um, subconsciously, the public interpret the name as MasterChef, which is two words and completely has the opposite meaning. The MasterChef is only one word. The name Master Chef is a blatant insult to genuine chefs and is a misleading title that takes advantage of the inexperienced general gullible public. While the clever combination of the two words Master Chef implies it represents as a Master Chef. However, this is impossible. A genuine Master Chef program qualification is achieved after extensive, accountable and unequivocal peer-driven, practical and theoretical ex examination that actually is only able to be attempted by qualified chefs in a few countries in the world. They are USA, Germany, Italy and Switzerland. Here is the evidence that the program is purely fantasy. The show glamorises a real job. Viewers are indoctrinated doctrinated to believe that cookery is an easy occupation that leads quickly to fame. MasterChef does not show the personal <laughs> sacrifice and effort to be a cook, does not explain the training required at a college, does not inform the hours of practice and the qualifications required to be a chef, does not show the abnormal or unsocial hours of a chef's work. The split shift where one works on a 12-hour day, it's that it's socially hard when you cannot take your girlfriend or your boyfriend out um, because he's working on a Saturday. Does not explain to your kids why you're not at home every evening because you're working. And does not explain why everyone else has Christmas Day at home but not you because you'll be working. Thanks Pauline, if I wasn't a cook I wouldn't be here. And I've been at work since six o'clock this morning. <laughs> Um, what I really want to talk about um, from Dario and I point of view is actually the passion and hard work that MasterChef shows. It doesn't really matter what MasterChef's actually brought to us is absolute real people doing real jobs in a kitchen, um, which we copy. I, I, I don't know anybody who hasn't downloaded a recipe, who hasn't followed a recipe, who isn't talking about a crock and bush that they saw Adriano Zumbo make. Um, everything about MasterChef is, is positive. Um, also, um, I believe there's two sides to our profession and MasterChef really showcases those. We've got food art 
and the amazing presentation, the splodges on the plate, the squirt bottles, the George using his tweezers. Everyone has to, you know, rush out to Chef's Hat and buy tweezers to use now because it's how we present all these, you know, little darling flowers and, and that. But um, restaurants are all using mirrors and boards and, you know, glass jars and, and all of that's come from MasterChef. Everything we've done for the last eight years is copied by watching those shows. So I completely understand what George is saying in regard to the, the quality of the cooks coming through, but everything MasterChef does is about passion, commitment, hard work, um, and love. Everything, you know, I, I'm a chef manager for 500 people every day, and one of my staff said to me the other day, Lisa, I, I, I couldn't put a finger on what makes your food delicious, and it's love. So we can do the training, we can do the learn from ingredients, but it's love and commitment which makes us stay in this industry. And I think every episode of MasterChef that I've watched, and there's about 300,000 people that watch it every night on television, and on the Facebook page there's one and a half million fans, um, and if you look at that Facebook page, it's amazing. So the information's there if you need it, and you can take, take it and run. But I think it has to be a positive for our industry, and that's why I'm in it. If MasterChef was real, I want you to use some logic. You start 10 people off in the kitchen, and they all finish within 10 seconds of each other. How realistic is that? If you started off 10 people with the same recipe, the same ingredients, they'd all have a variable time finish. I challenged Dario on the point he makes about a t-shirt or a coat. It's not about a t-shirt or a coat, it's about safety. These protect my arms from the heat. If I spill hot water, I don't burn myself. If I'm walking around with short sleeves, I'm in actual fact a danger to myself and actually, quite frankly, breaking the law in terms of food, in terms of safety. That's why you wear a coat in the kitchen. Not to say it's a lovely crisp coat and I'm, wow, I'm it. No, it's to do with safety. So Dario, I'd like you to answer that question. You telling me that a kitchen is not a dangerous place to work in, that a, um, a t-shirt is something you can wear, because a kitchen is a dangerous place. You are handling very dangerous items. Even on slicing now, you have to use a guard. But let's, Dario, let's hear Dario explain why a t-shirt's all right. Thank you, Chef. Um, I've been cooking for 20 years, and I mostly wore for the last 18 a long sleeve chef uniform, that's exactly correct. However, it's all about education. So we educate our staff to work within OHNS. Very, very important. And a lot of manufacturers these days, they do produce short lift jackets. So if they were not safe, they, won't be, they wouldn't be able to commercialize them. Is that right? So, here you go. Go to any school and tell me a school a private provider or a TAFE college where you will find students in t-shirts who are undertaking a cookery uh, course. So you're telling me that the 3,000 teachers out there don't know what they're talking about. They do. You wear a coat in a commercial training program as a protection and that's why you wear a coat. A hat is not worn to keep your hair out of the soup, which some people think. A hat is a brand, it's a symbol. That's all it is. But unless you're willing to brand your industry, unless you're willing to say, hey, I am different, you might just as well be a, 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 a doctor or a, a painter or anybody who wears a, a white coat. But this identifies you immediately, globally, globally again, from the normal person who's in the industry. They're not willing to challenge. <laughs> All right, I think Daria definitely wants to have the final. That's obviously uh, suitable for the industry. I get the point, however, there is a, a place for everything. A nice chef hat, and uh, being both of us involved with the top blanche, which means the white hat, uh, which is a, a symbol to recognize a chef in the, within the industry. So if we walk into this room with a long white hat, you guys will know, or at least 99% of you will know, that one of us was a chef, or both of us are a chef. However, when you come into my cafe, 
and you look into the kitchen, they can only be cooks, with or without a hat, what they can be. They can be painters, because they're cooking. <coughs> Back on the coat, I just gave you the example. With the coat, I totally agree with you. However, with, uh, with uh, these days, with uh, education, with training our uh, chefs on h &S is very, very important. And we got a brand in Australia that produced short leaf chef jacket, which Lisa's wearing today. And that was not a setup, guys. It was actually uh, a genuine incident shows that uh, it's safe to work with and it is according to the chef not to burn himself. In my kitchen there are three important signage. One of them says everything is hot in the kitchen. So teach your staff they won't burn. If an accident happens we can't blame the chef coat. Thank you.